Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Erudite Magic. In today's episode, I want to talk about who are you? Are you essentially a copy of someone else? It's me, by the way. But seriously, when I ask you who you are as a performer, is there someone that you're emulating, or are you truly, remarkably, and originally you? I think it's true that most magicians start in that place of parroting someone else. In fact, some of the greatest magicians of all time have started by copying someone else, almost entirely. I think about one of the all-time great originals, Mac King, who talks about his childhood idol, Terry Seabrook, and how he performed his act almost word for word at Abbott's and other places in the beginning. Not only Mac, but one of the truly great voices of all time, Eugene Berger, copied Don Allen when he was younger. I could go on and on, but the point is that magicians start by copying someone they respect. But the real question is, are you stuck in that space? Today's book and topic promises to help you find your own voice in writing your own material, and specifically the jokes, gags, and bits of business that you throw in to make the presentation more interesting. As always, I want this to be an open discussion, so if you disagree with me or you think you have an opinion about when it's okay to use stock lines, let me hear from you down in the comments below as we go through the video. We've all seen the invisible deck, and anytime you've seen a presentation of it, it's 95% certain that it's going to be the exact same presentation you've always seen. You know, throw the cards out, shuffle the cards, wait, you forgot to take them out of the box turn one over, put it back in, toss them up to me. Your card was the Jack of Hearts? Would you believe me if I said there was only one card turned face up in the otherwise face down deck? The Jack of Hearts. So why is it that all magicians present the trick in the exact same way with the same jokes? Is it because we're all hacks? My argument is no. It's because of the default or stock lines. Why do we use them? We use them because they work and because it's easy. After all, isn't it a lot of work to write your own stuff? Yeah, it is. So how does today's book, Out of Stock by Ryan Kane, propose to help? In this book, Ryan Kane gives you an explicit roadmap to writing your own lines, bits of business, gags, and jokes. There's specific instructions, there's support, there's examples, there's a process to follow, and it's a pretty easy book to read. But before we get too far into this, who is Ryan Kane and why should you listen to him? Ryan is a formerly San Francisco and now New York-based magician who performs regularly for Monday Night Magic and seems to dedicate himself to trying to improve his craft. Frankly, he's not much of anybody, which could be a good reason to listen to him. Here's someone who, unlike Eugene Berger with that rich, sonorous voice, you don't know anything about Ryan. But yet he's found a way to carve out his own voice and he's sharing his process with you, my erudite readers. And that could just make him the perfect person to teach you how to find your voice. After all, if someone who isn't really anyone can find their way, make a living, doing magic, and find a process that works, why wouldn't you want to try it? The book itself is a 200-page soft-bound book, self-published by Ryan, so you can get this on Amazon and maybe through a few dealers. I will put a link down in the description below so that you'll know where you can get it. The book was inexpensive. I want to say it was $15. So this is not a cost-prohibitive volume. But what it is, is a step-by-step -step guide to removing the stock pieces from your show and replacing them with items that you wrote and you can be proud of that are inherently you and not somebody else. I said it's a step-by-step -step guide. Literally, Ryan will tell you everything you need to do. He'll help you categorize the jokes that you use, whether those are stock lines, where it's appropriate to use traditional patter like giving instructions, and where you might be surprised that you're using someone else's lines. When I read what Ryan has to say, it's clear to me that he wants you to be an individual. He wants you to stop stealing other people's stuff. He wants you to become a better artist. And because of all that, he believes you'll be able to find who you really are instead of just parroting some other person who taught you magic. I'll tell you about someone who is an artist, is one of a kind and has found their own voice. That's Don at Don's Magic and Books. Don loves to put 
great books in your hands at reasonable prices, and this week is no different. You can head over to his website at www.donsmagicandbooks.com, and if you apply code STOCK at checkout, you could save 10% off the lowest marked prices on Don's website. This includes books, both used and new, DVDs, props, and tricks. Don gets a lot of really cool out-of-print titles from time to time, so I like to peruse his website often to see if I can find one of those rare books that I've been looking to add to my shelves. If you're a book lover like me, you can't go wrong by shopping with Don's, so be sure to head over to his website, use the code STOCK at checkout, and save 10% this week. Not only will Ryan help you write your script, he'll also help you in those moments where you go off script. Something happens, whether someone's heckling you or you even think they're heckling you. He has a whole chapter written about how to deal with people who seem to be interrupting your show and how to know the difference between someone who's actually out to get you and someone who's just trying to be part of the fun of the evening. We all have lines that we've probably heard other performers use, and when you're caught by surprise, you're likely to reach for one of those and throw it back out at the audience. That may or may not be the best move, but Ryan's going to teach you how you can deal with the situation in your own way. Ryan uses a lot of analogies to get his points across, and so I think that it's very digestible, very easy to read. He is a young author, and I'm not going to tell you that this is as polished as, say, Stephen Minch. But then again, who is? So who is this book for? I would say that this is for anyone who takes their magic seriously as an art, that if you want this to be art and not just tricks that you're doing for friends or people that you know, then I think that you're going to want to read what Ryan has to say, especially if you're interested in finding and creating your own voice or writing your own material, whether that's scripts for existing tricks or writing your own tricks. I think this could be a good supplement to a good scripting book. Because it focuses so specifically on the moments in between and making a trick interesting, I think it's a great place to start if you don't want to dive into a full, thick book like a Peter McCabe scripting magic. Who is it not for? Well, I guess it's not for someone who's okay with just ripping off other people's material, using other people's jokes, or doing tricks straight out of the box. Although, I do think there is a time and a place for that. I think that if you're new in magic, you really have no idea who you are, and you might not know how to present magic effectively. So I think it's perfectly appropriate to copy it. But just like most of us when we're children, we emulate our parents. We mimic what we see and we become their child. Eventually, it comes time to grow up, to move out, to become your own person. No offense to anyone still living in mom's basement. But if you're one of those people who says, I don't need to write my own jokes, maybe this book is for you, you just don't know it yet. Ryan gives you a lot of specifics about where to write the jokes, how long you should do it, how many iterations you should write, how you should figure out which ones work and which ones don't. He gives you some opportunities to try it out and says if it doesn't work after so many times, you can try this or you can do this. He gives you jokes to try to use to connect with your audience or themes, I should say, that will connect you with your audience when you're performing. He gives you lists of items not to joke about. He goes beyond, though, the jokes and talks about the interactions. He covers what happens when you meet a participant with a hard-to-say name. What do you do about that? How should you address your participants? What kind of respect should you show them? And gives you some advice from a younger performer about what's appropriate with today's audiences. The bottom line is this. I think if you buy this book, I think you can apply what he has to say fairly easily and your magic will be better off as a result. You'll be a better performer and you'll be more confident knowing that you're performing as you and not just some magician that has been to China and is telling everyone they've been to China. You guys know who you are. Look, it's an inexpensive gamble to take even if you get just a little bit of benefit from it. For $15, I feel like you can't go wrong. So click that link down in the description below and be sure to check this out if you're serious about finding your own voice with your own lines. Not all of Ryan's advice may be helpful to you, but I thought this was a very interesting book that made me think more carefully about what I'm saying to my audiences and what it conveys about me as a performer, an artist, and an individual. What do your words say about you? I did like this book, but if you want to see some books that I really wanted to like and didn't, be sure to click and watch last week's video. I hope you'll be inspired to take some action to write your own lines and become your own performer. But as always, my friends, until next time, keep reading.